You guys remember when Jay Bruce was the Yankees' first baseman for like five and a half minutes this year? And then he retired? Pepperidge Farms remembers. It's been a crazy season. Nobody could deny that. It began with an extra innings loss on opening day to the Blue Jays and had many low points and high points from the 5-11 start to the three triple plays to Jordan Montgomery outdueling Carlos Rodon on a Friday night in the Bronx. There was the near sweep of the Astros on May 4th through 6th in which the Yankees soundly won the first two games before getting beaten in the third game by Jose Altuve. We had the no-hitter from Corey Kluber in Texas. And then we lost him the next start. And you can argue that the Corey Kluber who walked off the field in Texas that day has yet to return. There was the tough series in Philadelphia that lit up the phone lines of the Michael K show and led to rants from me and other content creators calling for the Yankees to kick Boone and maybe even Cashman to the curb. John Carlos Stanton couldn't run to first base for the first two months of the season. The Yankees were striking out at incredible rates and hitting into double plays and making base running errors. Everybody was using spider tack, and the Yankees' offense was just dead in the water when the calendar switched over from spring to summer. Although you can argue it's gotten better, it still has its tough nights. On June 30th, the Yankees scored seven runs in the first inning on a night that Shohei Otani was pitching against them, and they ended up allowing seven runs in the top of the ninth to lose the game. We had the incredible shutout from Garrett Cole just before the All-Star break and seemed to be on the verge of sweeping the Astros in their building, only to have our hearts ripped out when the Astros scored six runs in the bottom of the ninth to walk it off. The Yankees introduced a plethora of new faces this summer. Rugnet Odor, Tim LaCastro, Trey Ambergy, Ryan Lamar, Jonathan Davis, Hoy Park, Chris Giddens, Joely Rodriguez, Clay Holmes. They said goodbye to Mike Tockman and Mike Ford and Luis Sessa and Justin Wilson. They lost a number of impact players to injuries for the season. Aaron Hicks, Darren O'Day, Miguel Andujar, Clint Frazier, Zach Britton. They got a glimpse of the future with Luis Heal and Steven Ridings. At the trade deadline, they go out and they add Anthony Rizzo and Joey Gallo to fix some of the overly right-handed issues that the Yankees had. And they started playing better. They started playing John Carlos Stanton in the field. The team started to score more runs. Stanton and Judge have become who we expected them to be all along. They've dominated the final two months with both of them eclipsing 35 home runs and having a chance at 100 RBIs. Stanton has, in particular, really stepped up his play with a number of huge home runs. He's even looked good on defense. He had those four straight games with a home run against the Red Sox and the Jays in September. Aaron Judge is having his best season since 2017, leaving it all on the field and proving that when he's healthy, he's still one of the best players in all of baseball. You could argue that they really begun to turn it around with the Field of Dreams game, in which the Yankees lost, but really showed some fight late in the game. The very next game was the beginning of a 13-game win streak that cut through six different teams. The White Sox, the Angels, the Red Sox, the Twins, the Angels again, and the Athletics. They, of course, followed the win streak up with four straight losses and losses in 11 of their next 13 games. That was the point in the season in which I felt most confused, most perplexed, most distraught. In my 30 years of watching nearly every single Yankees game, I've maybe missed a half dozen of them, I've never seen a team with such hot, hot streaks and such cold, cold streaks. We had the triumphant return of Luis Severino, who's been One of the best weapons in baseball out of the bullpen at a time when the Yankees needed it the most. We saw Jonathan Loisaga step up to that next level and become the pitcher that we all thought he could be when we first witnessed his incredible stuff when he made his Major League debut. Jordan Montgomery has stepped up and become one of the league's more consistent number three pitchers. Although his win total is low, he's been absolutely solid most nights. 
Mike King has emerged as a dominant force out of the bullpen, as has Clay Holmes. And now we're in the final weekend, where it seems as if every team in the league is fighting for a wild card spot. The Yankees have, of course, done enough now that they are headed to a wild card spot. They'll be in the playoffs. They'll be in the dance. They have a chance. The great thing about the playoffs, as Derek Jeter used to say, is that you can throw the entire season out the window. None of your stats matter. Glaber Torres' down year with power doesn't matter if he hits a three-run home run in the wild card game. Garrett Cole's tough streak to end the season doesn't matter if he throws eight shutout innings in the wild card game. One game can literally change everything. The Yankees didn't win the division, so they have to play their way into the ALDS by winning a winner-take-all game, which is not ideal. It's not the scenario that you envision in March, but it is what it is. They have no choice but to win or to go to the golf course a month earlier than they expected to. Aaron Boone may be managing for his future. If the Yankees come up short, it's quite possible he may not return. Even Brian Cashman has for one of the first times in his Yankees tenure, post-George Steinbrenner anyway, faced real scrutiny about his job security. But the Yankees can make all of that go away. Win a wild card game, beat the Rays three out of five, and you're headed to play for the American League Championship. And they've played well against both Houston and Chicago this season, so I think the Yankees could beat either of those teams in a potential ALCS and head to the World Series. It's possible. But for now, the Yankees need to take the approach of winning one game at a time. It may be cliche, but it's true. Win every night. It is no longer a marathon. It's a sprint. It's a crapshoot. And as of right now, the Yankees have as good a shot as anybody. Because as they say, you can't predict baseball, Susan. <laughs>